Welcome to Talkin' Mets with Rob. Subscribe to the channel for all your New York Mets in-game live, pre-game, post-game, roundtable podcast, and all the breaking news for our New York Mets. Enjoy the show and let's go Mets. What's up, Mets fans? Welcome back to Talking Mets and Rob. How is everybody doing? Before we get started talking about the Mets and Philly series recap, don't forget, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos, and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button, everybody. All right, guys, so it was a very, very, very disappointing loss for our New York Mets series loss against the Philadelphia Phillies when we had a lead. Four to nothing in the game two, a late lead yesterday, one to nothing after the Tyrone Taylor home run. Both comebacks from the Philadelphia Phillies. The bullpen in game two was the culprit. The offense after the third inning in the game two and almost all of game three were basically nowhere to be found. And Diaz didn't come through in the bottom of of the ninth to get us to the 10th inning, and we lose the game on a walk-off hit by JT Ramuto. But a little bit of good news, the Braves did lose yesterday, and the Dodgers finally helped us out, and the Mets are still tied with the Atlanta Braves going into their homestand, seven-game homestand against the Washington Nationals and four against the Philadelphia Phillies. So where are we after this series? Well, we didn't technically lose a lot of ground, right? We lost a game. We were up a game. But we're all still tied with 13 games to play in the regular season. Seven of those games are still against the NL East. And it's looking, it's, it's just going to come down to that Brave series. We all know it. No matter how well the Mets play, the Braves are probably going to basically do the same. And as if we're bad, the Braves will probably still be the same. It's going to go down to that series. But to wrap up the series with the Philadelphia Phillies are a lot of concerning things. Even though this team has been extremely good, there's still a lot of concerns going into the last 13 games of the season. The offense is sporadic. They'll score 11 runs like they did in game one. They'll score early in a game, like game two, but then they go scoreless the rest of the game and give the Phillies an opportunity to come back into the ballgame, which eventually happened in game two. Yesterday, now it was a pitcher's duel, right? We don't see that enough as baseball fans anymore, so we automatically kill the offense, automatically kill the offense on whatever fan base you're cheering for, whatever team you're cheering for as a fan. Yesterday, the Phillies were probably complaining, how can he not hit David Peterson? And the Mets were like, where the hell? The Mets fans were like, where the hell's the offense? Right? It was the pitchers duel yesterday. They're far and few between, but when they happen, we automatically blame the offense. And we don't give enough credit to the pitchers that were on the mound, and Christopher Sanchez and David Peterson yesterday. But there was opportunities for both sides, specifically for the New York Mets. The New York Mets had opportunities. They had it late, even after the Tyrone Taylor home run. The Mets had an opportunity to score another run, and who knows if it was two or nothing going to the ninth. Maybe the Phillies wanted to come back, you know, a little bit of pressure on them, a little bit of you know squeezing of the bat, and maybe the Mets would have won the ball game. But overall, the bullpen failed us in Game Two. The bullpen failed us yesterday in the ninth inning in Edwin Diaz. The problem that I had in Game Two and Three with the bullpen is specifically Reed Garrett in Game 2. And Cal Stevenson, who is basically a nobody, you have him on a full count. Your best pitches in that game, specifically, was your splitter and your fastball that you were throwing at 99 with your fastball, and your splitter is your put-away pitch. Your third best pitch is your slider. Why in the world would you throw your third best pitch to Cal Stevenson in that particular moment. Not only it's the pitch selection and your third best pitch, if you're a left-handed hitter, their sweet spot is low and in. 
that is known all throughout baseball for many, 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 many years of history. That was the worst pitch selection, the worst location against Cal Stevenson. When you throw 99 in that game, you would throw a 99. Cal Stevenson couldn't catch up to your fastball in that at bat. You sped up his, his bat with that slider, and it was in his wheelhouse, low and in. That was the frustrating part. Not only did the offense didn't score any runs in that game, too, after the third inning, you had Danny Young that couldn't get out of his own way, walked a couple of batters, didn't look good. Reed Garrett had to come in. And listen, he had to be perfect, right? Reed Garrett is one of the guys Mendoza trusts every single time, it seems like, with runners on base. He just has to be perfect. He wasn't. But it wasn't just him not being perfect. If you do a 99 miles an hour fastball and Cal Steven turned on it, okay, you tipped your cap. But throwing your third best pitch in the location you did was just waiting for disaster. And it happened. When you have a 4 nothing lead, you got to hold it down. Regardless of the offense not scoring any more runs, it's four runs. Four run lead. Severino was pitching good. The only guy that got to him was Harper with a solo and a two-run homer. We still had a lead, and then the bullpen couldn't hold it. So it's a lot of aspects of game two that was concerned, that was frustrating, but we still should have won the game, and the bullpen needed to hold it, and they did it. Game three, nobody was doing anything offensively. The offenses on both teams were getting shut down by Peterson and Sanchez. And then Tyron Taylor, who wasn't even supposed to play because of the Marte hit by pitch the day before, Tyron Taylor hits a huge home run in the top of the eighth. And the Mets had an opportunity to score another run, but did not and failed to. And then the eighth inning comes. You got to be better. You got to be better. They tied a ball game. All right. They tied a ball game. We're not done yet. Top of the ninth comes. Show a little bit of something, but do not score. In the bottom of the ninth with Edwin Diaz, And this is the problem that I'm having with Edwin Diaz. This is not because he has been really good. But ever since that Arizona series, and he's been shying away from his slider and using his fastball predominantly, which is fine. But when you have no confidence in throwing that slider where you need it to be in wherever zone or wherever location you want it, and you don't have the confidence in it, you're going to shy away from it in bigger moments, like yesterday against JT Realmuto. We can talk about how good JT Realmuto was against Edwin Diaz. That is not That has nothing to do with this particular moment because of the fact he had him 0-2. And if you look, he threw sliders that weren't good. He threw a slider to Realmuto that was a hanger. Realmuto was taking it. On the 0-2 pitch, JT Ramuto knows as a catcher that you don't have confidence in your slider. You don't have the confidence to locate that slider. Your your confidence is wavered because of what happened in San Diego and in Arizona. And that slider, you don't trust enough to throw in that pitch. And he was looking for a fastball. And not only did you throw your fastball, you threw it in the worst location possible, which was just above letter high, which is Ramuto's sweet spot. He is a high ball hitter on an 0-2 pitch with a devastating slider that Diaz does have, but because of the lack of confidence in that pitch, those next two pitches, or at least the next pitch after the 0-2 pitch, should have been a slider in the dirt. And let's go back to that top of the ninth when Mendoza pinched hit for Luis Torrens with Jesse Winker. What happened? Cassianos gets a base hit. Cassianos steals the base. And why do I talk about that pinch hit? Because Francisco Alvarez catches the ninth inning. We know Francisco Alvarez had had a lot of trouble throwing out base runners all year. And you have Edwin Diaz on the mound, who is not very good holding runners on. So everything came full circle in the bottom of the ninth. You had Edwin Diaz, who can't hold on runners. You had Francisco Alvarez coming into the game because Luis Torrens got pinch hit for in the top of the ninth who can't throw out runners. And Nick Cassianos, who is not very fast, had the perfect opportunity to steal a base. And I believe if Luis Torrens was behind the plate, he might throw out Cassianos, and we might be talking about a Mets series win today in this series recap. But that did not happen. So the trickle-down effect of pitching for Winker, pitching for Torrens, for Winker, and Francisco Alvarez behind the plate with Diaz on the mound, 
was the perfect scenario for Nick Castellanos to steal a base. And with Terence's pop-up time, which is outstanding, and his great arm, I think he would have gotten Nick Castellanos. And, and again, that is a what if. But I'm I'm pretty confident that, that could have he could have thrown him out. And then the 0-2 pitch from Diaz. Fastball up, which is Rio Muto's sweet spot and where he likes the ball and his his red hot zone. And the Mets lose the ball game two to one. It started out really good for the New York Mets. 11 to 3. The offense, three, three run homers. It was outstanding. Jose Quintana pitched amazing, but they did not finish the job. They had to win this series. It's unfortunate. Now we get a break because the Dodgers beat the Braves and we're still tied with 13 games to go. The Mets head back home to face the Washington Nationals for three on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. The Mets have to win this series. I don't want to hear about sweeping before the season series even starts. We all want to sweep. But let's focus on tonight's game. Win tonight's game with Sean and I on the mound. Gives you the best opportunity to win the series. You win the series, you're probably in good shape. We all want the sweep. But don't talk about a sweep prior to the series. Regardless of who you're playing. And this is a Nationals team that has a ton of top prospects up here who are trying to prove themselves. So as easy as you might think this series might be, it won't be. Because there's a lot of top prospects, a lot of young players that are trying to prove themselves to their team. The Mets got to not take them lightly. And I don't think they will. Now, some unfortunate news is that Francisco Lindor today is going for an MRI. That is concerning. Again, even if the MRI comes back clean, lower backs are a major concern because just because it might not be major damage, it's very uncomfortable with lower backs, especially being an active ball player. You're constantly swinging a bat, you know, torquing your hips. You're on the field, quick movements. Any little thing can can trigger the lower back in the lower back soreness. So this is probably the, one of the Worst injuries Lindor can have besides the season end the injury. But if he had a sprained wrist, sprained ankle, you know, uh, a strained hamstring, you can play with that. You can fight your way through it. You know, wrap up the ankle, wrap up the wrist, you know, do a little bit of, you know, physical therapy, you know, massaging with the, the hamstring. You can play through it because we've seen Lindor play through a lot of injuries throughout the seasons with the Mets. But that back is worrisome. We, he's probably not playing today. Now, Cunha has, you know, played pretty well in his spot, but he's not Lindor. Can the Mets win without Lindor, regardless of the c- opponent? Can they win? Because that's one less player that we trust in that lineup to perform. And this is where we got to talk about Nimmo and Alonzo and Vientos and Martinez. These guys got to step up. Alonzo has put better at bats together. The production isn't all the way there, but he's put better at bats together. Nimmo needs to be better. Martinez needs to be better. Vientos needs to be better. They got to step up if Lindor's not going to be in this lineup tonight and go and at least for the next couple of games, as long as the MRI comes back clean. So tonight against the Nationals with Manaya on the mound, win the ball game. No excuses, and other guys have to step up. That's a big key to the to this to the series. The other guys got to step up. We repeat ourselves as Mets fans constantly, but it's a fact. They got to step up. Somebody's got to step up. Lindor can't do it on his own, and when he's not in the lineup, he can't do it at all. Obviously. So who is going to step up? Let me know in the comments, guys, who you believe is going to step up in this Mets lineup in this national series if Lindor is not in the lineup for this series. Once again, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit on that like button. If you enjoy my content, want to see more, want to get notified when I post my videos and when I go live, you guys know what to do. Hit on that subscribe button. Mets fans, let me know in the comments how are you feeling right now. Did get lucky with the Dodgers beating the Braves. We're still tied with 30 games to go. Let me get your feeling. Let me get your thoughts and opinions in the comments, guys. Once again, guys, thank you for watching. And as always, Mets fans, let's go Mets. Welcome to Talkin' Mets with Rob. Subscribe to the channel for all your New York Mets in-game live, pre-game, post-game, roundtable podcast, and all the breaking news for our New York Mets.
Enjoy the show and let's go Mets.